Hi everyone. I'm here to bring you our new moon report from our recent group spiritual service dedicated to Arunla. Before I get started on that, I wanted to chat a little bit about a couple of other things. Also, I'm playing some music in the background. I have the radio on um, really softly, so hopefully when this is all said and done, it's not too disruptive in our video. So. Everything's going pretty well here. Um, my main priority recently has continued to be self-care. Um, that, that continues to be a huge theme in my life and I have a feeling that it continues to be a theme for many of you and that if it hasn't been, it will be soon or maybe that's something that you should consider focusing on. Um, the energy right now seems to be it is. It's really good for purification, um, cleansing, spiritual healing, those sorts of things. So it's a great time to take some extra care for yourself, extra time for yourself. Um, we've all been through a really intense period of time. It's affected all of us differently. Um, of course, it's been different uh, depending upon where you are in the country. Some of us are much luckier than others, of course, and my heart goes out to everyone who has experienced tragedy and severe weather recently. Um, Mother Nature is obviously not very happy with the way that humanity has been treating the earth. I do want to acknowledge that. But regardless of what you have or have not been, it's been a very intense and heavy time. And even just being aware of the fact that these things are happening in the world, and even just being aware of the intensity of the political climate, this is all really heavy. Um, and I have a feeling there's other there's a lot of personal things going on for people as well. This is not just about the world stage, but obviously uh, it's difficult to... <laughs> to be living in this climate, political and environmental climate, and especially when you have personal things going on for you, it's kind of compounded. So I want to acknowledge that it's been a difficult time all around, and now is our time to heal and repair and decide how to move on, um, how we're going to go about our lives in a proactive, um, positive, a self-sovereign way, in a way that's going to help, um, in a way that our lives can start to become a part of the solution, right? I think that's on a lot of people's minds. Um, and the biggest thing is to heal and repair ourselves. Um, regardless, even if you only have time to take care of yourself, to heal and repair yourself, you're still doing something good for society and for the world. Um, change starts from within. It's really true, even if it feels like you're not doing anything, you are. We have to make ourselves good people. We have to make ourselves whole and healthy people. We have to be able to get along and be a positive force in the world. And if we can't do those things, then we're not going to be able to help anyone. Um, and just by being uh, genuine, by being true to yourself, by being authentic to your own needs, by fulfilling your, I don't want to say duty, but by fulfilling your purpose, by fulfilling fulfilling your purposes in life, um, by becoming more spiritually aware, um, by being a positive force in other people's lives, even if it just means treating people good in public when you go about your daily life, even if it just means um, being that beacon of light in your workplace at times, um, regardless of how small these gestures seem, all of those things add up to helping make the world a better place. So don't ever feel like it's not important to start with yourself. Uh, to take that time for yourself. Don't ever feel like you're tiny compared to all of these big things that are going on. You are tiny, but you're also, we're all part of a whole. We're in this together. Um, we're social creatures. Our brains are wired together. We're part of a holistic cosmos, and we all need to be doing the best we can for ourselves in order to be a part of doing better for the world and to be a part of the world doing better in general. So I wanted to take some time to acknowledge that. Um, I didn't realize I would have so much to say. <laughs> 
So the other thing that I want to mention really quickly from the beginning is that the group spiritual service for Our Lady of Guadalupe is coming up tomorrow already. Um, I'm trying to be really good about putting reminders out for the group services. I'll tell you what I am excellent at is posting the service dates in advance. You can always find those dates listed on the Patreon page, posted um, about a week before the beginning of a month. So what well, one to two weeks before a new month begins, you're going to see the service dates for the entire following month. So try to pay attention when I post those and then you can have it in your mind when those dates are. Maybe if you can write them on a calendar, um, something of that nature. I do often post all kinds of uh, clues and reminders on my Facebook page, sometimes on Instagram, and um, so you can find them all kinds of different ways. Anyway, if you haven't gotten your Guadalupe petitions in yet, then please do it now. If you have, thank you very much for being diligent, but um, it's time. Um, Our Lady of Guadalupe, I have a special relationship with her. I've mentioned that before. I don't think I need to go into that right now. Um, she's great for fertility for mothers, for all concerns related to family life, um, marriage, love relationships, the home, children, things of that nature, but really she can be petitioned for any special need or request. If you need a refresher about the kind of things that Our Lady of Guadalupe is good for, um, the kind of things she concerns herself with, or her history, her attributes. I have been posting about her frequently on my Facebook page, so please take a look over there and you can find all kinds of detailed information. So that's coming up tomorrow. I do like to um, service her once a month typically, and I have gotten away from that because I felt that there were some special needs or some special energies going on these past couple of months. Um, I felt I felt a lack. I have felt uh, an, an emptiness where where those services usually usually belong. Um, so you can anticipate that I will be focusing on her for the next few months. I need to get back to that dedication and that service to her. She really appreciates it, and she's really approachable, and she really likes working on our behalf. So. For the next, for this month and then one or two months after that, the bonus service is probably going to be for Our Lady of Guadalupe. Although we do have October coming up, and I do all kinds of special things in October, um, honoring ancestors. We have Day of the Dead. We have All Saints Day. We have Samhain. So I might be eating my words. But, th so there could be a special, a different special service in October after that, it's going to be Our Lady of Guadalupe for a couple of more months. Okay, getting on with things. The New Moon Group Spiritual Service went really well. Um, it was kind of simple compared to our last couple of Group Spiritual Services. However, I started with purification of the space and purification of myself, doing a fumigation with frankincense. Uh, frankincense doesn't just help with purification, it also helps with spiritual connection and drawing in um, spiritual presence, spiritual connection. It heightens spiritual connection, it heightens, um, how, how do I want to word that? It heightens spiritual thinking or magical thinking. It helps you get into that frame of mind. Um, it creates that mystical, magical atmosphere. Um, it works. It works really well for that. So that's another reason that I burn frankincense. It's not just for purification purposes, although I, I love that it's multifaceted in that way. I finally used up the rest of the Joss paper. I've been talking about Joss paper for a while now. Um, so I used the rest of the gold leaf Joss paper, and that's what our paper petitions were written on for this service. They were folded up and sealed with wax and placed on the bottom of the plates. Gold leaf joss paper is seen as a high-level spiritual offering. It's great for issues of wealth and issues of um, special requests. It's also particularly beneficial when as a high-level offering, meaning to spirits and entities that you perceive as being um, higher level than others. 
So I thought that that was really appropriate for Arunla. Arunla is one of the Orishas that is closest to God. Um, so that is what our paper petitions were written on. I anointed those with Van Van oil. I usually use my spiritual connection oil for these group spiritual services, uh, but this service felt like Van Van oil was appropriate. Um, Van Van is one of my favorites. Um, a lot of people use it. Traditionally, it's used in in uh, situations where there's been bad luck. It's to break up bad luck and bring in good luck. Um, the way that I connect with it is a little bit different. I use it for all kinds of purposes. Um, the way that I see it, it's not just about breaking up bad luck, but it is about raising vibrations. And I felt like we needed um, some light vibrations in this service. I felt like it's time to bring in some brightness. Van Ben Oil has a lot of citrus notes in it. It also has gold leaf um, sometimes, and it has pyrite in it. So it's got these, these bright, sparkling vibrations, which really resonate well with me. Um, and it seemed very appropriate for this service. I think that Arunla enjoyed it. So um, the uh, vigil candle was carved. I don't usually do that for the group spiritual services. And I, that's something that I've just started and that I believe I'm going to continue. I carved it with my business name in... in um, dedication to my clients, dedication to you all, dedication to the patrons. Um, in individual spiritual services, I always carve the vigil candle with the client or the target's name and date of birth. And I haven't been doing any carving of the vigil candles for the group spiritual services. And now I am. I'm carving it with the business name and in dedication to you all. So that's a fun new thing. It's always nice to have the, the services um, changing and growing all of the time. I loaded it with the My Clarity and Psychic Awareness Botanical Powder. Um, some of you may recall that I created, I formulated and created that power powder during the St. Lucy group spiritual service. And um, I've kept it around. It's great for like spiritual illumination, spiritual connection and spiritual illumination. It's wonderful for bringing us clarity of mind, clarity of messages, clarity of spiritual connection, um, illuminating what needs to be illuminated within us and in our lives, um, which is really important when you're talking about spiritual connection, especially receiving guidance, receiving wisdom, um, messages, those kinds of things from spirit. And that's what Arunla is all about. Um, one of his names is also Aifa. That's a traditional form of African divination. And he oversees, Arunla is an Orisha of divination. Um, divination, foresight, um, I wouldn't specifically say psychic abilities, that's too broad, um, but he does know the future and the past. Um, I'm trying to think of some other words for it. He oversees fate, he oversees destiny. The reason he oversees fate and destiny is because he sees all, he has clear seeing. So that is um, why I chose that particular botanical powder. The backup lights, I chose those in white. White's a wonderful color for offerings. I chose nine of those candles. Nine is a lucky number in root work and in other, all kinds of magical modes. Um, odd numbers tend to be lucky. Nine tends to be a favorite of mine. Those backup lights were also dressed with Van Van Oil and then they were dusted with the same botanical powder. The offerings that I left, um, first of all, the candles were surrounded with yellow carnations. And of course, in a group spiritual service or any kind of spiritual service, it's about that spiritual connection and devotion. So everything on the plate is an offering. The candles are an offering. Those carnations were sprinkled around the plate with some additional botanical powder and that that whole thing is an offering to please the spirit. Um, not just to be physical, visibly pleasing, which is also one aspect, but also to create the, per, the right energetic vibrations to draw in their presence and to create a pleasing atmosphere. So, I also left offerings of honey 
and water. Honey is one of Arunla's favorite offerings. He also likes coconuts. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any coconuts for the service. Um, I think he forgave me. I think it's okay. But honey, water, carnations, and sacred smoke. I burned Palo Santo, and I also burned more of that um, Spiritual Illumination Botanical Powder. The powders that I make are multifaceted. They're not just for loading and dressing candles. They're also great for incense, floor sweeps, poppets, sachets, mojo bags, all kinds of different things. Um, some of them can even be used for baths. So um, I often use them for incense as well as for loading or dusting the candles and create a layering effect in my services and rituals. Um, so the Palo Santo and the botanical powder were burned consecutively after the frankincense. Of course, Palo Santo, um, a lot of people use it for purification the same way that you would sage. I feel differently about it. It's not specifically for purification. That's something I would burn sage or something similar to that for purification first or for cleansing. Um, and then I would burn something like Palo Santo to raise vibrations and bring in blessings, right? You need to have balance there. Anytime you are getting rid of something, you need to then draw in what it is that you're seeking. Otherwise, you leave a, a metaphysical void. So Palo Santo is actually, in my opinion, much better for drawing in blessings, um, pleasing spirit. It's great as an offering for drawing um, benevolent spirits and uh, their um, influence over your lives, right? So that's what I use Palo Santo for in this service and what I use it for in general. And then the botanical powder was burned actually during the service. When I say during the service, I mean while I'm chanting and praying, while I'm drawing in spiritual connection, while I'm focusing on that connection and actually engaging with spirit and honoring spirit rather than when I'm preparing for that part or when I'm finishing that part. So what else do I have written down here? Prayers of honor were given to Arunla, of course, always. Um, and I wanted to mention, this just came to me, just like I was saying about the Lady of Guadalupe, um, I haven't been necessarily focusing on Arunla during the new moons spiritual services either. And that's something that I want to get back to as well. As I mentioned, October may be a special month, but after that you can look forward to a little bit more consistency with some of those things. I've noticed a difference. Um, I work with Arunla and Our Lady of Guadalupe um, regularly. I, I feel that they are patrons of mine, that I have a, a good relationship with them, and I notice their influences in my life and in my work and in your lives when I work with them consistently. So you can expect me to get back to um, regular services dedicated to Arunla as well. It felt really good this new moon to be getting back to that. So after prayers of honor were given to Arunla, then I focus on spiritual connection, and then three sets of prayers for each participant are said. So I did want to talk a little bit about what my process is of, you know, I use a lot of terms like spiritual connection, or when I do my written reports, I say things like energy was sent your, in your direction. And I don't think people really know what that means. I think it's different for everybody. And I think that when I'm talking about it, it's very personal to me and the way that I work. So I'm going to try to describe some of these steps very briefly and tell you about what that means for me so that you can get a better idea of what I'm doing in these spiritual services. So when I say that I'm focusing on spiritual connection, I am a spiritual channel. The way that I feel that I channel, the way that I channel is through my crown chakra. And I open that chakra up. After saying prayers of honor to spirit, I open that chakra up and I focus on allowing spirit to come into my body and to work through my body for the service and for my clients. Um, that's just... That's just something that comes natural to me. That's just something that is a part of me, is a part of 
who I am and is a part of my spiritual connection. It's something that I've always done naturally. Um, I've had to work on developing it. I've had to work on understanding what it is and understanding how to control it and understanding how to use it. But I haven't had to work on gaining the skill. I, I always had the skill and then it was my job to understand it and control it. So when I say that I'm working on spiritual connection or when I focus on spiritual connection, that's what I'm doing. I'm allowing the energy of spirit to come through my body um, and to then work through my body. I do some of that while I'm preparing the candles, preparing the rituals and things of that nature, but it's, it's a little bit different. Um, it's not as intensive as what I'm doing during the actual service. So after allowing that energy, allowing spirit to come into my body in that way, I then um, generate that energy back out of myself through my other chakras. It, it depends on the day and what I'm doing, which chakras that energy comes out of. Sometimes it's my heart chakra. Sometimes it's more like my solar plexus. Um, but then I, I build that energy within myself and I allow it to back out other chakras in my body and I direct it to the candles, to the altar, and to the service. After I do that, after I feel that I've done that to the proper um, intensity, that I've raised the right um, energy and power or allowed enough through my body, um, I then focus on building that energy through with mental tools, through visualization, and through, I don't have other words for it. It's mainly through visualization. I feel it's more than that, but I don't have other words for it at this moment. So typically what I do in those visualizations is I see the energy building around the candles, building around the service, building around the altar, and expanding up into a cone of energy I usually visualize it as a rainbow cone of energy. Um, that's a technique that I've used for a really long time. The reason I use rainbow colors is because it represents all the chakras. Um, the reason that I feel comfortable working with all the chakras is because it represents all the different um, kinds of energy, all the different, um, all of the different ways that spiritual energy applies to our lives. Um, yeah, so I focus on building a cone of rainbow energy around the, the service. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's green, blue, um, gold, but most often it's rainbow energy. And, uh, visualization is a really important part of practicing magic, um, any kind of magic. And that's what root work is. It's magic. People like to make distinctions between those things, but I don't. Um, so after building that energy field um, and feeding that energy to the service, really building the energy of the service, I can usually see a, a heightening of energy in the candles. There's kind of a, a climax of the service. And that's usually when the flames become the largest and when I can feel spirit um, the most intensely. And after that, I do some kind of meditations and energy work. That's not, um, that's more so for individual services. If I need to imagine specific goals happening for people or use my mental capabilities to imagine and therefore bring forth specific goals for a specific people. That's when that um, meditation and energy work comes in. Now, energy work is what I'm describing when I'm talking about building that cone of energy around the surface. So um, these definitions do have some gray areas sometimes. Um, after that, I kind of wait, watch, and feel. I usually say thank you to spirit, thank you to Arunla, or thank you to whoever I'm working with, and I say goodbye. Um, my goodbye is often uh, blessed be, or somotit be, blessed be. That's not traditional to hoodoo or root work. That's, um, that's more traditional to witchcraft, but um, I'm eclectic. I learned that a long time ago, and I've, I've never given it up. I have some habits like that that just work for me that I stick to. But my point is it's important to thank spirit, and it's important to say goodbye. 
I've called spirit um, into my life, into my body, into our work, and then I need to say goodbye to spirit. It doesn't mean that they leave right away, but it means that um, I'm no longer channeling that energy. I'm closing myself up to that energy. Um, it's important to have a real wor world physical indicator of finishing that within yourself so that you're, it's a kind of grounding so that you're not leaving yourself continually open to that energy. Um, the, the, that's a whole nother topic. This I'm getting into a lot of other things. So if any of you end up having questions about anything that I've mentioned here or you would like me to elaborate on anything I've mentioned here, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm always happy to make videos for you to answer your questions or to elaborate, elaborate on any of the topics. So please let me know. Drop me a line. So after saying thank you and goodbye, I kind of wait, watch, and feel. What does that mean? What does it mean to feel? So I pay attention to the signs. I pay, t pay attention to the way the spiritual energy in my workspace and in my home and in myself feels. Um, I'm an empath and a clairsentient. It means that a large, one of the largest ways that I receive signs and information from spirit um, is through the way that I feel. So that's something else that's a little bit difficult to explain. I can't necessarily put that into real, real world terms all the time, but a part of my rituals is definitely feeling. So I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling signs and indicators and guidance and messages from spirit. I'm also waiting for the candles to burn, and I'm watching the physical signs in the candles as well. That's another way that. Anyone can always get signs from your services is watching the signs from the wax, watching the signs from the flames. Um, I find that meditating on the flames and meditating on the candles can often tell me a lot more than just watching the signs. I've tried to get that point across in the past um, and I'm bringing it up again now. And it's This work is much more in depth than that. This is not just about watching the flames and taking the signs literally, or watching the whack patterns and seeing a symbol and taking all of that literally. Literally, This is about your spiritual connection to that service, the entire experience that you're having. Um, there are many different ways I'm receiving messages and feelings from spirit and messages and feelings from that service, and it all compiles to make, um, to make one coherent kind of uh, energy or message. So the biggest part of this is not necessarily the signs, the outward signs and symbols that you see. Um, and in the group spiritual services, honestly, the wax patterns are not as important as the other signs, as the feelings and the connection that I'm having. So, um, especially, so, so in these services, I'm not necessarily going to be going that in depth to about the wax patterns. Um, probably from here on out, I'm not gonna go that much, I'm not gonna go very much in depth about the wax patterns because in a group spiritual service, it's really kind of cut and, and dry. It's more about, did the candles burn well? Did I receive positive signs from them? Or did I receive any warning signs or negative signs from them? The rest of it is, is about all kinds of other things. So. When I'm doing a personalized service, then the signs, the patterns of the wax and all of the different signs from the wax flow, the direction the wax flows, all of those kinds of things become much more important because I'm working for one specific goal. These spiritual services are about honoring spirits and also asking spirit to be available and present in all of your lives. Um, so it's like, did we get a good response from spirit? Was spirit here or not? It's, it's pretty cut and dry. So in this service, the candles burned very well. The candles burned well. There were no negative signs from wax. Um, there were very positive signs. The flames were high. The candles burned down at a moderate pace. Um, the wax was pulled pretty tightly. There weren't any jagged signs or symbols from the wax, so there weren't any blockages uh, indicated, and everything went very well. 
Uh, thanks for waiting it out through this really long video, guys. I didn't realize that I had that much to say, but obviously I did. I hope that you all enjoyed being a part of the group New Moon Spiritual Service. I'm looking forward to the Guadalupe service tomorrow. Thank you so much for being patrons. I really appreciate your patronage, and I look forward to many more. Thank you. Blessed be.